Hey, welcome to the Tech and Tech Podcast. I'm John Martin. And I'm Dean Reverman. All right, Dean. Uh, you know, we like to add value. We do. For our We're a value partners. added distributor. Yeah, exactly. You know, we yeah. talk about value added resellers all the time, yes. our customers, yes. but we also are a value add distributor. That's, this is true. So we want to add some value to them. And yes. we, we do that in a lot of different ways. We have a lot of great services to do mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. our marketing mm-hmm, and all of our mm-hmm, channel connections, all yeah. this great stuff. Yeah. But what about helping them understand a little more about their actual customers. Yes. I mean, yes. I, would, I would think that'd be important if somebody right. could come to me and say, hey, we, we did a lot of research and learned mm-hmm. a lot about your customers mm-hmm. and what they actually want and yep. need and yep. where you might find opportunities. I can't imagine too many people would say, like, nah. Nah. Don't worry. I don't need that. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> No, we are leveraging the full power of Blue Star <laughs> That's right. so that we can all have a better understanding of what our customers' customers are looking for. Yes, sir. Yeah. So today we're going to do a deep dive into two recent articles from Blue yes. Star Nation. Yes. We've done this before, but we're going to get into a couple Man, more this today. this is good stuff, I'm we, telling you. we got one about AI, and we've got one about restaurant point of sale, kind of a follow-up mm-hmm. from our retail, retail point of sale, which yep. I know we did an episode about that, yep. too. So we're going to get into and we're going to talk about the methodology. We're going to explain who we talked to, why mm-hmm. we talked to them, all the mm-hmm. questions that we asked, what mm-hmm. we gleaned out of it, give a little bit of insight and mm-hmm. depth from our point of view, Yep. some takeaways that you There's can There's some good stuff in here. Use. No, there I'm really pretty is. excited. There's some yeah. really good stuff in here. Yep. Yeah, I completely agree. So without further ado, right. we're going to do that. We'll uncork it. Plus our usual value to the VAR. What's Tech Connected with you? It's time to plug in and get connected. <laughs> Welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. It's time to get connected. All right, let's get into it yes. here. Uh, so, first of all, I I hope if you aren't already, if you're listening to this podcast, mm-hmm. you must like, you know, useful information and right? education and yes. insights into channel the channel. Based. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm going to assume that you're also then checking out Blue Star Nation. Right? Well, let's not assume. Okay, let's we, not we, assume. We need to make sure right. people are aware that there is such a thing. Exactly. You should be because if you like what we're doing here, we've got yeah. a new blo- not a new blog anymore. We're, we're about a year into it at this point. Yep. Uh, called Blue Star Nation. Yep. Uh, you, as always, the links are going to be in the show notes to these two mm-hmm. specific articles. Mm-hmm. But if you just go to nation.bluestarinc.com, that's it, is where you can find the blog. We've always got new stuff there. We're trying to put up a couple of good articles at least you know, yeah. every every couple months or so. Yep. Um, you know, or at least a couple of quarter, I'd say, you know, mm-hmm. to like, you know, get some information out there. And the reason why we are, we're taking our time with them, not just shoving a bunch of content, is we're putting a lot of background effort oh, into yeah. these. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're being very intentional so, about yeah, this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And because, again, these end user surveys have been mm-hmm. a big part of what we're doing. We're finding mm-hmm. a lot of folks really like these. And, of course, that takes some time to get all that yep. information. And we'll yep. talk about that. Well, it's much better to come up. We, we decided, right? It's much better to have four, five, six great pieces of content exactly. than just, you know, stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That you're just filling up our bar blog right. and stuff. I like could that. whip up a random article about like, why point of sale is important. <laughs> exactly. You know? yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's going to look like any other generic crap you're going to no, see somewhere. No, but, but we this want... is authentic, non AI, exactly. Yeah. Authentic, <laughs> exactly. Research that's going I, I promise you, because I, I think I actually ended up writing both of these. Granted, it's mostly just you know taking information and disseminating it, but I did not use Chat GPT or any <laughs> other AI. In the course of these creating this content. Now that said, yeah. we do actually have an article which we well, mentioned we right. you know, a few years, a few uh, weeks back, I think, ab- about using these AI mm-hmm. marketing tools to create mm-hmm. advertising. I recommend mm-hmm. checking that one out mm-hmm. too. Uh, but no, we're you, human beings. They're yes. actually putting yes. their yes. their blood, sweat, and tears, oh, yeah. or you know, just. You know, typing away. Maybe, you know, a little bit of a crick in a finger or something <laughs> while I'm typing away at it. It's not, I'm not going to promise it's that hard of work. So. No, but this is good stuff. It this is. This is really good stuff. Uh, so let's get into the first one here. Yes, we did, sir. We did a survey about AI, artificial intelligence. It's called, uh, Are End User Orgs Embracing AI? Why mm-hmm. or Why Not? We Asked. So a little so quick. So end user orgs, right? End user yeah. orgs, yes. Are they using AI? I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. So mm-hmm. we have a great telemarketing team that we work with that helps us out with this stuff. They made for this particular one 3,626 calls. That's a lot that's of That's a lot calls. of calls, dude. I'm, I think that's probably more phone calls than I've made in my life. <laughs> that's a lot of or calls. Or ever will. 
<laughs> Even back when your sales rep days, you know, uh, you had to smile. Yeah, prob- probably. Okay. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't the greatest sales <laughs> oh, rep. Right. At least not At least not when it came to making calls. Cold calls, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 3,000, you know, that's a lot of calls to it, yield. It How many is. people? We got 48 responses, 48 responses total responses, out man. of that. So I'm telling you. You got to put in the work to get the response. That team just makes it happen, though. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, so a quick little rundown here. So most of the respondents were directors or senior level employees. Which is cool. Yep, yep. Financial planning, data analysis, or operations for their company. Mm. Um, the industries are tackled a nice wide range that you know covers a lot of the industries that we w- tend to work with in this channel, mm-hmm. including healthcare, retail, supply chain, grocery, wholesale, transportation, public safety, and Man, more. Man, that is a wide swath. It is. So we got like a good snapshot, you know, we broad. Do indeed. Mm. Yes. And you can tell based a lot on the responses here, too. Um, so respondents were offered a $15 gift card to participate. I'll be honest, it's mm-hmm. always amazed me when I go through the responses. Mm-hmm. A lot of people turn that down. Like, like they'll still give us the info, but oh, yeah. like, you don't, we don't, yeah, I, don't I don't need, need the, the gift card. Cook. Which is cool. great. That's awesome. awesome yeah. You know, yeah. love to know that we didn't have to bribe you to get it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that you're okay with giving Not information. Not a bribe, yeah. incentivizing. No, 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 I'm <laughs> with you. Uh, but we, we, we appreciate the folks that did. All right. Great. So let's, let's start digging into some findings here. Yeah. And I want to kick it off first of all, by talking a little bit about some folks, whether they are or aren't using AI mm. and, and, you know, and maybe what they're using it for effectiveness, that stuff. So we'll yep. do those and then take a little moment to kind of dive into what that means. So our first question was, are you using artificial intelligence in your business today? Mm-hmm. Uh, only 33% said yes. Now, I, I realize I, I put that on our cue sheet of only, but yep. 33%, a third of the people that responded is yep. still probably much higher than it would have been even, I don't know, two, three years ago. Oh, I would agree with Five that. years ago, for sure. Absolutely. So I think that number yeah. has grown probably quite a bit from what we would expect. It, yep. it may seem like it's small compared to the people that aren't, mm-hmm. but I still think 33% is a pretty sizable chunk of people that are using AI I do. In, their, in their day-to-day business. I do. And it's consistent mm-hmm. with Gartner, by the way, because I, I, I did a little bit of research. Okay. Gartner was said 37% of organizations have implemented there AI. There you go. So okay. our, our data is like dead on. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. so that's a good... <laughs> that's always nice to have a, right? a <laughs> super serious... Confirmation. Research yeah, company. Yeah. Gardner <laughs> says, you know, <laughs> right? confirm that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, then we also asked, what kind of work are you asking these systems to do? Now, of course, because we do this wide breadth of yes. you know, companies and yes. industries, yes. there's a lot of different responses here. It's not like you can say, like, well, 20 of them said X. So, <laughs> but but to give you a little rundown of some of the stuff we heard, things like reviewing clinical records, uh-huh. temperature control in trailers, yep. cost allocation optimization, yep. facial recognition, mm-hmm. loss prevention. <laughs> Somebody said bomb retrieval. I highlighted and that one too. <laughs> Say it again because I was bomb, talking. Bomb retrieval and disposal. Really? <laughs> I'm, you know what though? If there's one thing that I is... think I want to leave to a robot, I'm I'm yeah, fine with that. You okay. know, like all right, all right. Like that's. I yeah, mean, they usually do drive that little robot yeah, yeah, out yeah, there yeah, to yeah, take yeah. care of that. Yeah, yeah. But you know, and I guess you know, it's it could, there can be some smart ways to use AI yep. for that. Yep. Um, uh, well, okay. I mean, hey, I don't know the details. We didn't go in barely ask. We didn't go ask him like, hey, can you explain that in more depth to us? We're curious. <laughs> but it's it's there. Uh, and then stuff like like transportation, for instance, passenger count, estimating run times, which is one of those like, oh, that totally yeah, makes yeah. sense. Just that that makes of it. a lot of sense. Yeah. So, so again, not a lot of crossover with these, um, but also a lot of the responses were very much in, in the wheelhouse of what we expect so it from is, these kind it of solutions. Is. But, but it's, this had me t- taking a step back. And what is artificial intelligence? That's a because, great question, too. You know, and so I don't, I don't forget where I got this definition, but here I'm going to read it to you. Artificial in, uh, intelligence is machine displayed intelligence that simulates human behavior. I'm going to come back to that okay. or thinking and can be trained to solve specific problems. So I, I forget whose definition that is. And I thought right. that was pretty good, but I'm going to go back to the human behavior one because I don't know that I would think of it as simulating human behavior. When I think AI, I'm thinking code. Right, I'm thinking, right. I'm thinking very much when we asked what kind, I'm thinking it's analytical and modeling, right? right? right. Oh, we're using AI to review clinical records, give us some kind of prescriptive analytics that's happening in healthcare, or passenger count, and then doing some analytics around estimated run times. This all makes perfect sense to me. But if you think about it, robots, you know, I don't know that people think, you know, uh, that a robot is like an AMV is... AI. Yeah. I but yeah. it is. Yeah. Because it's roaming around and it's doing it's making know, decisions based it is, on data. Well, and it's inputs. simulating human behavior. Right. Okay, so well our behavior task. I don't maybe I'm getting hung up on that, but that's a good point. You, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? But but I don't know that I would have put it in there. So to your point on the bomb retrieval, if that is a robot, right, you know, right. okay, or is it some kind of analytics around I don't know. It senses the air and it senses chemical compounds right, and it's right. saying, hey, with this mixture in the air, 
you know, that could be a bomb. Yeah, yeah exactly. this is a bomb, yeah. right? Type of. Well, I, don't know. I think to your point there, and we'll kind of talk about this a little bit more as part of our takeaways of this. What AI means, what mm. machine learning means mm -hmm. to different people yes. are completely can be completely different things. Agreed. I think if you again, I think if we actually, if we just simply ask the question of all these forty eight people. What does artificial intelligence mean and what does it do? Mm -hmm. We probably would have got 48 different answers for that, too. I think so, too. Yeah. Like, you know, I think you would have had some people touching on a little bit of that definition you made in, in various well, ways. So here, here's, but here's, everyone takes their own perspective. Everybody does. Absolutely. So let's take the, the what I would call the physical one and when we ask what kind, the temperature control in trailers. So if it's just a thermostat <laughs> that's controlling the temperature, I don't consider that AI. But if it's using machine vision to look at the vegetables right, and right. if it's detecting, because I saw this somewhere, there's there's one like on bananas, right. that if it starts to see them turning a little green, it's going to vary the temperature. Right. Okay, right. that to me is a little bit intelligence, and now yeah, we're yeah. getting into AI. Or if you you're packing more stuff in there, and yeah, this is like, right. hey, we've got more product, we need to lower the temperature in order to make sure everything stays cold there enough or whatever. There. And it's just automated, right? Right, in the background exactly. It's happening. Yeah, so, good yeah. point. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, again, this is one of those things where you see these answers, and in Immediately, you're thinking, like, how does that work? And, mm -hmm. yeah, we could have gone down that road of asking everybody mm -hmm. for details of how it worked. But yeah. I'll be honest, a lot of folks didn't even, wouldn't, like, wouldn't actually commit to explaining how they used it. You know, there mm -hmm. was industries where it was maybe a little sensitive, and they didn't want right. to go into detail about what they were using it for or how they use it either. So, you know, I guess Well, that. I got this calculator, and it did it, and that's AI. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine that that's AI. But anyway, everybody's exactly. perspective is a little different. E exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Take, take that with okay. a little bit of grain of salt on, like, the, the usefulness there. No, but I think we're squared for. up on what we yes, think AI is all exactly. about. But, uh, you know, the human part of it was unique yes, to me. Anyway, I, I completely let's go. agree. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So then we also asked, on a scale of 1 to 10, how effective yes. do you find these systems? Yep. Again, for the folks that were actually using it. Mm -hmm. What I thought was interesting about this is most folks actually found it useful. 80% mm -hmm. of the respondents that did say they were using it in their business gave it a 7, 8, or 9 on the scale of 1 to 10 for effectiveness. So that means the folks that are using it do feel like it's actually working out for them, yep. you know, for the most part, and giving it a high rating there. I uh, thought that was really impressive, I by did the too. way. Yes. I mean, when you got 80% 80, 80 of people giving it a 7 or a higher, yep. that means they're not hating this this technology, right? It's not like, <laughs> exactly. it's, oh, there's the AI again. Right, right. You know? Just getting in the way <laughs> and in screwing the things up. <laughs> <laughs> Making my job obsolete. Exactly. Yeah. They've you know, eighty percent have embraced it and, and feel like it's it's effective. It's right. doing what we want it to do. Exactly. That's Which I cool. mean, that's what we hope for. That's the oh, idea. Right, it's like right, you, right. you know, you want to think that and you want to be able to tell customers that when you mm. do implement a system like this, that it's like it's not like it's going to do something that you're not wanting or expecting. Right. It's not going to make someone's job harder or yep. necessarily eliminate someone's yep. job. Yep. It's it's just about adding an extra layer of mm -hmm. you know productivity and and specificity and mm -hmm. data to your mm -hmm. business that mm -hmm. should be or a good efficiency. thing that you want. Yeah, yeah efficiencies. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yep. Yep. And then finally, for those folks using it, we did ask, also ask a quick question about what would need to change or improve about your AI or machine learning systems to make them even more impactful to mm. your business. And th this one, there was three themes that really stood out mm. amongst all the responses. Uh, this is the kind of thing where, like, I'm sifting through the responses and, like, all right, you know, everyone's saying something a little different, but what are the themes? The big three themes were more integration with their current systems, mm -hmm. totally checks out, mm -hmm. more interactivity and standardization around inputs. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get back to that mm -hmm. one in a moment because I want to clarify that a little bit. And the other one basically, I want it to be better and faster. Right. Yeah. Which, you know, let's be honest, <laughs> most people say that about any kind of tech, you know, <laughs> better, faster, more productive. Well, I'm going to take the first two okay, and then it. you go for the middle one. So integration, to me, that's good news, right? This is opportunity for solutions integrators. Yep integrating yep. more of these type of solutions. That's why we sit around here and preach, you know, the tech stack and the partner ecosystem yeah, exactly. and those types of things. And by the way, I think that, you know, if you take on that mindset, it'll help to solve number three, which was a better, faster applications, yeah, exactly. right, is what we're seeing. So, yeah, what could change better integration? That, to me, again, is just a, a clear golden opportunity for for our folks, our customers, to just keep it in mind, uh, keep keep in mind the opportunities there, uh, and then helping to solve yeah, the end. Yeah. But you're interested in the inputs. Well, you know, because this one was <laughs> one, and I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head anymore some of the responses, the specific responses that led to this. But basically, there's a lot of answers that came around the idea of like, hey, I want to be able to, I want to be able to do more mm. with what my AI is working on. Mm. I want to be able to give it more information. I want to be able to, but I also want to be able to be more interactive with that information. I gotcha. And and they also, there was also a lot of, you know, stuff about standardization. So of like, hey, I want to make sure that the information we're feeding is, is standardized in mm -hmm. some way and that we're always putting in the same, 
information at the same kind of level and point or whatever mm -hmm. in order to make sure that what's coming back out of it is is equally got it the same if you got will. it and maybe standardization <clears throat> with other systems like i'm right. thinking of like transportation <clears throat> logistics if you got your ai down but your ai is not really tuned the same way the company that you're delivering to or something exactly. like that. And so there needs to be that kind of yep. standard. And I think that's kind of what some people were hinting at because, mm. and you'll hear this again when we kind of talk a little bit more about what the people that are a little leery about it and are curious about why they should do it or if they think it's going to be viable for their industry mm -hmm. is you get a lot of discussion also around like, hey, I work in a big industry where there's a lot of standardization, mm. where there's a lot of protocol where there is, you know, stuff that's implemented and, you know, from a legal perspective or whatever it is, yep. that's like the gold standards and guidelines for our industry. And anything you're inserting like this mm -hmm. has to fit within that mm -hmm. framework in yep. some way. And yep. if it's not, then it, you know, even if it's potentially something that's improving the business of the industry, if it's not fitting within current guidelines in some way, it's not going to be relevant or yeah. it's or it's not going to give us what we need yeah. to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Makes that's sense. where some folks are concerned about too. <laughs> yep. The one I think, for some reason, the one I kept coming back to when I'm thinking back on some of the responses, this one's, this article has been from a few months back, was especially like transportation industry. Mm -hmm. That's where I feel like a lot of folks specifically pointed out, hey, my industry has some very, very specific needs. Mm. And, and I get it. You know, if you're managing an airline, for instance, <laughs> you know, there are some very certain specific <laughs> yeah. things that you want to make sure always accurate, always, always on the same way, always the yeah. same way mm -hmm. so that planes aren't flying into each other. Yeah. Or, you yeah, know, that would be good. Getting jammed up. You know, yeah. I mean, we save enough. Our engines aren't falling apart. Yeah, exactly. We have enough here. issues with travel, with travels. It is, you yeah. know, we don't, we don't need an AI <laughs> messing it up because <laughs> one, you know, one major airlines using a certain type of AI and another yeah. one's using something right. different and they're yeah. not talking and they're not to each talking. other. Yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. So then, you know, then we spend a little time, obviously, because this is where there's potential opportunity for our, our, our VARs mm -hmm. is, you know, the folks that said the AI wasn't part of their business. And we asked them questions about, do you foresee it becoming part of your business in the next few years? Where are some of the barriers? What are going to be the challenges to implementing it? And that's where I think there's some really good, interesting takeaways that we can kind of operate from here. Mm -hmm. So let me do a couple of these here. 63% um, of folks said that they were not currently using. Of those, 47% thought that their industry would adapt or adopt mm -hmm. AI within the next five years. So yeah. even though you got a lot of folks saying, like, we're not doing it, almost half of the folks that aren't doing it did see a path to that somewhere within the next half decade, which, again, opportunity, because mm -hmm. if they think it's going to happen, then that probably means some, you know, a lot of these folks are going to start implementing this, and a lot of these industries are going to start pulling it in. And the only take I had there is I thought five years was a little bit long. You know, those 47%, true. True. I, I think that honestly, it'll be in the two to three year cycle that they'll get maybe some AI implemented. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, and I suspect I'm, I'm curious, you know, I, I don't remember where we came up with that particular, you know, angle of the question. But mm. I know sometimes you tell somebody two to three years and they mm -hmm. think that's so short of a short, timeline. Yeah. They can't imagine something happening <laughs> in that like short of a summer. timeline. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I think sometimes you say five years and that's just far just enough far enough. Where people yeah, think it's futuristic enough. Because yeah. I think some people, again, they look at this and they hear about this stuff and they think, that sounds like the yeah. future. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not really the future. It's but, right now. Yeah, the reality we're, is... We're living in yes, the future exactly. already. And they yeah. might not even be so, using it and not even realize it. But exactly. All right, so then we asked some questions about barriers to use and change challenges. And the big ones that stood out here is a lot of folks talked about the human aspect. Yeah. And that was from a couple angles. Sometimes it was, hey, I, you know, humans just need to be doing this because it's too, it's too complicated for a machine, which mm -hmm. I always find kind of funny when someone s suggests that. <laughs> not that I'm saying that that's not a thing because I still think the human brain is so much more complicated than any machine can oh, yeah. potentially replicate. Oh, for sure. But we also know there's a lot of things machines can do that humans already do easily. Yeah. Uh, so that was part of it, as well as people obviously concerned about, well, what about jobs? You mm -hmm. know, what about people mm -hmm. getting you know pushed out because mm -hmm. of a, an AI or ML doing this stuff for them? Mm -hmm. A lot of folks mentioned that there was no obvious fit in their industry, which is another one that I kind of call BS on. Yes, because I agree. I yeah. think just because you think oh, that, that doesn't apply over right, here. Just because you think it's not uh, yeah. applicable to your industry doesn't mean there's probably not a lot of applications. Oh, for sure. A lot of them, again, mentioned their industry was too complex mm -hmm. to adopt AI, mm -hmm. which to me says, well, if it's that complex, that might be a perfect reason to have AI <laughs> to scale back some of that complexity and then cost and implementation. Mm -hmm. So, to me, the bottom line of all these was that I don't think a lot of folks are thinking about the possibilities mm -hmm. or they have a very limited scope about what I AI think that's is it. and I think what that's it does. It. Yeah. And they're just not seeing the potential big yep. picture, which is fine. Yeah. That's kind of what our job is yep. going to be right. to help them, yep. help them get there. Or, and in solution integrators in the in the future. Yep. I mean, you know, you have to make the story and create the use case for these because when yep. when you have a study that that says, well, there's no obvious fit 
for for our industry. Right. Really? I, I, yeah, I'm with you. I'm calling BS. Yeah, on I that. can't think of too I, many that you, know, that you uh, couldn't <laughs> apply AI and efficiencies or something along the line. Right. I don't care what you, even if you're a hot dog vendor on the middle of the street. I mean, there's, exactly. There's probably an application, or there's going to be something one. can tell you what the the best corner is, the best time of day to be on a certain corner. No, it like, didn't apply to my industry. Like no. it's time for you to move your hot dog stand down to East Twenty Fifth <laughs> right. Street That's because right. That's right. you know Wall Street's about ready to let out for lunch or something. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on, you and know. The cost like, to implement these things. I mean, the ROI usually on an AI impl- in implementation is relatively quick. We're not yeah. talking years that you have right. to put right. on the accounting books and depreciate over three to five years. I mean, you know, you can usually get the ROI pretty quickly out there. So yeah, I think that I think you're right. I think yeah. it's a, a perception issue exactly. here that the barriers are. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the last question, which I thought was had some interesting answers, was what would need to change yes. for basically for you, your industry, your company to adopt AI and ML. And then mm-hmm. I love some of these answers because these are the ones where I'm like, this is where you found maybe not your Luddites, but the folks that are gonna need <laughs> I need a push or have someone else show up in the company that shows them like <laughs> why it. this stuff needs to happen. That's it. The three biggest ones is that were mass acceptance. Right. So like no, I need everybody yeah. to use it before I'm not I'm gonna, gonna do it. that until everybody's right. doing it. Uh, a prove it mentality, I love which that was one. like, you know, you need to prove to me this yeah. stuff works, or yeah. I need to see some case studies. Yeah. I need to see some other businesses that have done it successfully. Yeah. And then the last one, which I understand this one, security and privacy. Oh, sure. yeah, I'm concerned sure. about yeah. security and privacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, this was one of those things where those first two responses in particular, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, then your company, and this is the way that like, you as a mm-hmm. as a VAR can delicately approach this by essentially saying, if you think that mass acceptance has to happen before you can get on board or that you need to have it proven to you mm-hmm. and it need to be case studies and other companies doing it, mm-hmm. guess what? Your company is going to get left behind. Yeah. <laughs> Because the other businesses that aren't waiting for everybody to yeah, do it right. or that aren't waiting for they're the perfect adopt case a lot study, yep. they're going to be on board. Yeah, they might stumble mm. a few times. They might fail a few ways. Right. They might yep. find out where it is and isn't useful yep. you know, and have some have some trouble getting there. Yeah. But by the time everybody's doing it in your industry, mm-hmm. they're going to be way ahead and already have been doing it. Mm-hmm. They will have set the standard, and you're going to be playing catch-up yeah. yeah. or potentially at, pushed out of your industry. For a reseller, I mean, in my mindset, knowing this now that – you know, there's a significant amount of people that are going to say, "Well, it's got to be mass accepted, or you got to prove it to me." Right. Then you got to sell into that. You got you got to just know going yep. in the door. You need use cases. You get, you're going to have to break down those barriers in their in their exactly. mind about these types of solutions. Yep. And the better you can do that on the front end, the more opportunity you're going to have to close the deal, get the solution in place. Yeah, so, yeah, I agree. Yeah, you know, and, and I mean, and, and to me, it's just on the uh, the the back end of it, thinking like, all mm-hmm. right, you know. Like, where are you in the back end? It simply means like, hey, you probably know already which types of industries or companies or even just specific people that you work with are the resistant to change, yes. the prove it types, the yes. I need everyone else doing it. Yes. Knowing that, to, to your point, means that when you know you're going to start having these conversations, you should already be in your mind thinking, all right, this is that person that's going to make a prove it case or mm-hmm. demand some backup before they're interested. So I know what to start talking about when I walk in the door yep. with them. Yep, so. yep, 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 yep. All right. Uh, all right. Well, then we'll we'll get back to talking about some of our takeaways and value of the VAR later from that specific survey as well as this this next one. But I want to go ahead and get into our next one here because it's another one we've got some really in-depth, interesting conversation to yes. have here. Mm-hmm. Uh, restaurant point of sale. Yep. Uh, so, again, another one. This one actually came out fairly recently. Um, so it's called um, We Asked 72 Restaurant Owners About Their Point of Sale. Here's what we learned. Mm-hmm. This was when we made 6,085 calls <laughs> to get our 72 responses. Uh, and we talked to restaurants across the country. Um, nearly all the respondents were either owners, CEOs, directors of operations, or managers. So we tried to have fairly high level yeah, people high, right. in, in, mm-hmm. in you know, either. We're not going for the you know whatever the guy taking out the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The bus boy <laughs> the didn't bus get boy to weigh in. I'm sorry. You yeah. know, he, maybe he has an opinion on point of sale. That's yeah. a different report. Exactly. Yeah. So and this was everything from small local eateries. It's fun on uh, you know when mm-hmm. I was putting this together, I you know crafted a little map of like where all the responses came from across the country and I stuck a few logos from some of the companies and you've got stuff like Ben and Jerry's and IHOP and Chick-fil-A like you know like major corporate you know well-known yeah. established yeah. entities yeah. and then also just some small little things you know like Garcia's you know uh, you know a Mexican restaurant or uh, Phil's coffee Phil's coffee yeah. Phil, Phil's with, with a Z, Z yeah <laughs> 
So, you know, so again, the idea was like we wanted to, we got responses from folks that may have been just operating one or two local stores. Yeah, which is awesome. Uh, and then some of the big dog big guys, changes, yeah. or, mm-hmm. you know, and franchisees as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so again, um, you know, all across the country, again, we offered a $15 gift card for them to participate in this. Mm-hmm. And we got a lot of great responses here. So yeah. I want to kind of break these down first all right. by talking about the, the folks that, you know, when we're asking about what they're currently doing. So let's three. Let's go through three questions here before we we talk about this. So one, we asked, "How long have you been using your current point of sale system?" And the responses on that were, "This is again kind of like the retail survey we did. I felt mm-hmm. a little bit eye opening because yep. I think we have this perception that a lot of folks are just point of sales this awful thing for them, and they're mm-hmm. always looking to make moves and make mm-hmm. changes. Mm-hmm. And this kind of again, like the retail one, said, "No, that may not be the case. Not so much." About 50% of responders are using their current system for five years or more. Mm-hmm. Um, and many of them were for much, much longer. There were several people that had been using the same system for 20 plus years, even. That'd be 10. Uh, yeah. 10 yeah, exactly. Out of 72, it. 10 of them for 20, 20 years, years or, or more. I don't even know how that's possible. We'll come I, back to that. I don't <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> because again, I like every now and then, I like to hearken back to my days in retail in a bookstore. And yeah. that was 20 years ago at this Dude. point. And I promise you, whatever that system we were using, I would be embarrassed and ashamed oh, yeah. to still be using something like that today. Well, it means it's it's likely running on Windows 95 yeah. or something like that or XP. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? No. Exactly. Anyway. But now, however, some of the most popular ones in use are a little bit more modern. And these folks were typically more in like the, you know, the one to five year mm-hmm, range. Mm-hmm. Um, but Toast, Aloha, and Square mm-hmm. were by far the most popular. Kind of makes sense if you know anything about, you know, POS and, and restaurant. Those make sense as as popular ones. I also want to point out the ease of use. Mm -hmm. Um, So we we ask for this on a scale of one to ten. You know what? You know what do you basically? What's your ease of use? What do you think is the ease of use for and reliability for your system? Seventy two percent said a seven or better. Mm -hmm. That's one again. One that's one of those checkpoints where I feel like kind of flies in the face of maybe what you might have normally thought about this. Again, after that retail POS survey, I kind of feel any more like I'm I'm throwing a lot of mis, you know preconceptions out the window about <laughs> what people actually think of their point of sale mm-hmm. and what we think they're supposed to think about it. Yep. Because again, a lot of folks are like, yeah, I think it's it's fine. You know, it's yep. that's that's like good to great, basically. Mm-hmm. That they're saying that's exactly about right. the ease of yeah. use there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's talk about this. Any anything right. stand out about those particular? Yeah, I'm going to go back points? to the to the length there. You know, because 50 percent of them are using it uh, over five years, but that also means that 50 percent of them are are under five That's years. Right. So there is, you know, 50% of the market out there has, has had their system for not that long. Right, um, right. When I when I did compare it to the retail study, in our retail study, it showed the average age of a POS system in retail was 9.7 years. So, you know, I don't know what the average is here, but, but it seems to be, you know, when you look at some of these other statistics, that either way, both, whether in retail or restaurant, people are holding on to their systems, yep. period. Yep. Um, 28% have the system them over 10 years, and we've already talked about the 10. I don't know even <laughs> what you call them uh, that have it over 20 years, but let's go with the 28% that have a system that's 10 years or older. I don't, John, I mean, how much has changed in 10 years? Yes, exactly. I mean, I like, mean, I mean, like, AI the Toast and thing, Aloha or, and Square, do those even exist 10 years ago? No, I don't think so. Maybe Square, I, like, I don't feel like Square is going to have to do while, some fact I, checking I here, but I don't yeah, think Yeah, I don't so. even know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, a lot has changed in the last 10 years. So just think about that when yeah. you're walking in there. And 30%, 3 out of 10, have a system that's older than whatever, you know, most yeah, of my children. Yeah. It's 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 crazy yep. uh, to think that. So I was really kind of surprised in, on that as well. Yeah. Um, when you get into who they're using, I was a little surprised on how low micros showed up. Yeah. Um, not a lot. You know, there were... Well, 4%, like, I think. Was it 4%? Yeah. Yep. It was something like that, which I always saw... You know, I, look, I know they're dominant in the tier one, but I thought they would show up a little bit more uh, in, in some of the restaurants right, here. So right. I don't know. That was a little bit surprised. But to your point, it's not really surprising that these big aggregate POS, um, they make up 43%, 43 plus percent of the market. So this is the Toast at 23, Square at 14, Clover at 3. Just yep. adding those guys up, and, and uh, I mean, you're getting up to more than 40% right, right. that are those, those kind of big aggregator POS. Uh, systems. Yep. Finally, you know, my take on the ease of use, again, to me, no real surprise here in the sense that seven, seven, uh, you know, 
72% rated it as a seven better. Um, and when you look at why, number one, or at least one of the ones in there was easy to train. And again, yep. I yep. think we called this out on the retail POS one as well. Training just keeps bubbling up to the top as yeah. being a reason why they love their POS yep. or hate it. Yep. You know, if it's like, no, no, we got to, you know, training's impossible right. on this right. thing. So you got to lean into that and, yep. and have a plan for training, not just when you implement the new, but how, what is the ongoing training? If you can create, you know, materials or even a service around that, that, you know, hey, you've got a, you've got a web portal or something like right, that that right. people can go to, employees can go to and quickly learn this POS yep, system, yep. that's going to be a huge benefit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So well, I mean, takeaway. it goes, I mean, retail and restaurant, high turnover. Yep, you exactly. Know, right? Those are both industries where you have a lot of, a lot of yep. new faces coming in on yep. a regular basis. Young, Seasonal help sometimes. Yep. Yeah, well, most and of the time. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so you want you want something that's easy for them to get up and running because you're not bringing that person in to spend three weeks training them. That's right. <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> yeah. like that's not that's not the goal because oh you, you know if, yeah, if it's Christmas start... help by that time Christmas oh is over you know <laughs> yeah, like, we're done like you're done already thanks so much so you need this something um, you're gonna have to have something where the first time you stick yeah. it in front of a register you yep. maybe have to have someone there helping them out for like the first yep. couple hours and after mm -hmm. that they're on their own just yep. fine so yeah. so yes yeah. so that does lead into yeah we you know we asked some questions about what you like most mm -hmm. and least about your current point of sale yep. and to your point yes on the most side ease of use and simplicity were easily the top response 50 percent used that language 18 percent mentioned uh, reporting capabilities or services that allowed for mobility mm. cloud access from anywhere and made it easy to marry front and back of house operations interesting um, toast in particular got a lot of praise for data management and back of house connectivity yep. on, on a lot of these responses gotcha. and then to your point some of the other attributes that stood out the ease of, of training um, quick, simple price changes, menu management, the kind of stuff that, you know, you have to do in a restaurant mm -hmm. um, was, was the stuff that stood out. What I will recommend also is if, you know, if you're, I know listening to us, we're giving you kind of an overview here, but definitely go check out the article also because yeah. we actually dropped in a couple sound bites from yeah, some of these those. calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can actually hear someone that we interviewed talking about what they like most, a couple people about what they like most about their system mm -hmm. um, and also what they, you Literally know, the voice of the customer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you know exactly like, hey, you know, this mm -hmm. is literally what someone told us, what they said they do like about it and mm -hmm. why. Um, so that's, that's good stuff. Now on the least side, this is one where I thought the answers were interesting here because 25% of those we interviewed said basically nothing. <laughs> or I have, I, I have really no have, problems. I have no problems. I don't have anything bad to say about my current point aye, of sale. Aye, 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 aye. Again, that's the stuff where I think if I was, if, if I was in the point of sale, you know, business, I well, probably go, sales. Ah, I'd probably cringe. If you're in you know? new sales, right, but, yeah. but if you're like, you know, it's good that 25% of your customers are happy. That's, that's a good They're point. They're perfectly yes. happy, yeah. you know. But if your goal is to go out and sell as much new as possible, yeah. you've already got a quarter of your, of your base <laughs> is... Probably the not interested. You're gonna have a hard time finding pain points because clearly Absolutely. they can't think of. And, and again, yeah. think about too when you do these kind of surveys and you mm -hmm. get people on the phone or like you know and you've seen this like whether it's whether it's phone surveys or whether it's sending out a, a survey that people are filling out online or something. Most of the time, if it's a fairly anonymous survey, mm -hmm. people have no problem just opening up and just saying whatever right. they feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. fact that you ask this question and 25 percent of the responders cannot think of anything really negative to say mm -hmm. about their point of sale mm -hmm. i think is 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 kind of striking you know yeah. it's, it's yeah. it really stands but, out well let's also keep in mind who these people are mm -hmm. they're the owners ceos directors of ops and managers True. So maybe they're not the maybe they're not users. the we talked yeah. about that in the yep. retail pos like you know the person on the on the front lines like dang on this pos system you know <laughs> they're standing there ringing somebody out and they hear their boss in the back are like <laughs> yeah. no i don't have any problem with our point of sale it's it's fine the reports come like, in turn around day. shoot them a dirty look yeah. like yeah. we're talking about we're we're good here. No, Struggle so, right now, yeah. You know, keep that in mind. But, uh, but anyway. Some common complaints that did show up, though, were glitchy, unreliable, frequent crashing connectivity issues, which kind of all yep. are sort of part all of the same thing. All makes sense, thing. yep. Security, mm -hmm. and support also, security and support also showed up frequently as a concern there as well. Mm -hmm. And we had a few other kind of, you know, problem areas, but that was the, the big stuff that really stood out. Yeah. Now, because of that, and obviously people mentioned support, you know, so we, we did want to clarify a little bit, like, hey, what do you think about the technical support for mm -hmm. your point of sale system? Mm -hmm. You know, because that's always a great great question to ask too and i think we got some some interesting responses to that too again out of a scale of 1 to 10 61% so a little over half gave their tech support for their system an 8 or higher rating mm -hmm. again another one that kind of stands out because 
to your point, if you're the person who's been helping with these implementations, that's mm-hmm. good. That means you're that's offering right. good technical that's support. What that, that's what I read in Or that. your partner, if you're partnered up with yep. you know one of these POS you know, software companies, is giving good tech support. Yep. But then it also, on the flip side, means if you're trying to get at somebody to get them to switch because of technical support, you might have a little bit of an uphill battle if they feel like they're actually yep. getting good support. That's right. Them. That's right. That's right. Well, I, I took that as good news for the VARs and, yes, the, and the ISVs. That, mm-hmm. hey, they, they like the tech support that the community is exactly. providing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And then, of course, we had to ask, you know, a very important question that's on everyone's mind. Mm. Would you consider changing yes. to another point of sale? Right? Yeah. Uh, and this one, basically, 50 percent, 49 percent said no. They were not interested in changing uh, their point of sale. Mm-hmm. At least 12 indicated that it wasn't their decision to make, though. You know, they mentioned, like, hey, maybe uh, someone okay. else hired yeah, the company. Or it's a corporate thing, or yeah. we're a franchise, and you yeah. have to follow the franchise. So, right. So you know, you know that even can, if I wanted to, it's not going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. That could right. like stilt it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then, so then you know, we decided to dive a little bit deeper on that. Though. Yeah. Okay. So if you did have to switch, here's a question: If you had to switch, what do you think would be the biggest challenge in making the transition? Mm-hmm. And back again, we're going to go back to what we mentioned earlier the, yep. of, of why people like a certain system. The ease of use is yep. training. Yep. Thirty-seven percent said training would be the most challenging part to get new to get employees up Bingo. and running on a new system. Mm-hmm. I get it. Completely makes sense. Uh, 18% were also worried about the transition from mm-hmm. one system to the next, whether mm-hmm. it was the process itself or if they had to do it across multiple locations, mm-hmm. integrating with other systems, mm-hmm. doing everything seamlessly. Mm-hmm. And then you had a few responses like cost, which I, again, it's interesting sure. that yeah. cost was not one of the top two. You know, I think it's another one of those yep. things where people think like... Willing to invest. Right. They don't They don't want to switch because it's going to cost too much. Or yeah, my right. system might be more expensive than mm-hmm. what they're using. Mm-hmm. Not really something people are that concerned about. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, it came a little bit lower in on the tier there. Yeah. The time obviously involved there. Um, convincing someone to make the switch if it's what if it wasn't their decision, mm-hmm. and then moving data in menus was another one that popped up a few yeah. times. Yeah. So, well, I think any thoughts gotta, on those? I think you got to sell into that, right? So the, the top two are the training and tra- transition. Right. Again, I'll just harp on it. You got You got to sell into that. So have a transition plan. Exactly. If one of the issues that you know you're walking in and you want you've got a better system and all these good things. Your customer, your prospect in the back of their mind is thinking, oh, the transition, oh, this is going to be really painful. Right, I don't right. know that I really want to do Address it. You yeah. know, hey, come up with a transition plan. Here's what we're going to do. Here's the timeline. Right. I would, don't I wait would for them to ask out. you about it. Oh, no. We I talked about saying. that from, it from, from the beginning. Yeah. 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 You just want you want to be proactive and on the training side. Hey, look, and you know, I know we're going to be putting in this system. So here is the training process right. that we're going right. to have. If you address those two, you're mitigating, I feel like, a lot of the pain of, of what people are going to, you know, in their minds yep. of seeing is switching. So why are they? Why do they have their system for ten years? Because yeah. they don't want to retrain do and yeah. they don't want to transition, right? And so, a lot of folks probably think too, like, hey, in order to switch, I'm going to have to like shut down my business for a day, right? right. Or yeah. even a few hours. So you got to come up with a plan. Yeah, yeah, like you know, especially if it's a small business owner, mm-hmm. is like, look, every dollar counts, every yep. every minute I'm open counts, and yep. you know, it matters. I can't afford to you know to close down for. You know, for a, 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 a lunch rush or whatever, mm-hmm. to just to get you know a new system implemented. I can't yep. afford to shut down for a day, or yeah. certainly not more than that. So yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm going to go back to the would you change question, right? So 49% said no, we're not we're not going to change. Right. However, 13% said they were in process, and right. 23% said yes. Yep. So if you add those two, 36% of businesses in your area right now are considering or, or implementing in, in POS. So yeah. that's four out of ten. Yeah. I took that as being pretty good. Yeah. You know, it's open uh, to to the idea. So you're going to get six no's, right. hard, you know, or whatever, like no or whatever. But you four out of ten are going to be either in the process or, yeah, okay, talk to me. There you go. So if you, if you can talk to them and you got a plan about training and, pro, and uh, transition and everything else, uh, all your other fabs that go into your uh, to your solution, right. you, I think you're going to have a better chance, right? There you go. So I agree. I, you know, I I did want to call that out. Yep. That was kind of cool. And then uh, finally on this survey, we wanted to kind of wrap this up by, you know, asking about not just point of sale. Mm-hmm. We're talking to restaurants about other potential technology. Mm-hmm. Where might there be other opportunities for our VARs? You know, what other tech might be in place or could potentially be in place? Yep. So three questions here that we asked. One was, do your servers use handheld tablets or smart devices to take orders? Mm-hmm. 62% said no. 38% yes. Yep. Uh, does your restaurant have digital menu boards? This one was very lop 
lopsided. Mm. <laughs> uh, so 63 of the respondents did not currently deploy digital menu boards compared to only nine that did. Yep. We also asked on that one, why or why not? Mm. And uh, th- those were some interesting responses, too. Mm-hmm. I encourage you to dig into those. 13 owners did not see a use yep. for digital menu boards, many citing that it did not fit their business model. Yep. Yep. You also had a few people that indicated, like, well, we did it during COVID, but it's no longer necessary, which is one of those, like, what? What? Yeah. Why would you even do it and then not <laughs> stick with it? Like, you know, that one didn't make sense. Yeah, to me that's either. that's where I'm yeah. like, you did it wrong. Yeah. So, do you know what we mean by digital menu <laughs> yeah, board? Exactly. <laughs> like do you, do something something is not right. Here. Something's not right. And yet. you're right. That's a good point. Is yeah. like, you know, did they understand what we were talking about? Right, here? right, right. Uh, and then for those that did say yes, some of the reasons included that they thought they were very cost efficient. They allowed for fun promotional stuff. And it allowed them to display specials mm-hmm. before their guests received the full paper menu at the table. So yeah, I thought yeah. that was interesting. Yep, yep. And then lastly, we asked about QR code menus yes. at mm-hmm. restaurants. Mm-hmm. This one was a little a little closer. Um, so it was still... I don't know. Go ahead. More people still said no. I think it was about 45 respondents said no. And then the rest said, you know, that, that they were. So it's still... To me, that's surprising. Still about one, you know, one and a half times more people saying no than yes. You're right. Um, and and again, you know, this was this was again one of those ones where you know we if we kind of asked, a, I don't I don't think we specifically asked why or why not, but but some mm-hmm. folks gave a little extra context. Mm-hmm. And again, for a lot of them, the ones that weren't currently using it were ones that said, well, we tried it during COVID and just didn't feel like sticking with it, mm-hmm. or or mm-hmm. a few that were like, well, our system doesn't really actually allow for that, which. Again, I'm, it's one of those ones I might call BS on. Yeah, I don't Maybe know. Maybe you that just don't thinking, know that it does. Right. You know, well, so. it's, it's, because to me, this one's really easy. Right. Uh, first off, I can't imagine not doing this because you just for a QR code, you just need to anchor it to a place on your yeah. website that has a PDF. Yeah. And so to me, that's, this is simple, not yeah. quantum physics. This no. is really easy to do. Yeah. We've been doing this Slap for some stickers on some literally tables. Literally decades. Yeah. Right. You know, if you don't have somebody on your staff that can go onto your website, whether you're using a free service or whatever right. and drop a PDF on a specific URL, I, maybe. I, yeah. I mean, this just seems like a no-brainer. I was yeah, really surprised does. that 45% are not using or not offering right. QR because a lot of people still I don't like menus. Yeah. I, it, I think it's, I don't know, I don't want to use bro science here, but I think <laughs> that the menu is like one of the most Viral bacterial oh, lace. I'm sure it is. Items. I'm in, sure it in, is in a restaurant because it's you don't just, think they're you know, wiping those down between no. hand, taking it back and handing the next person exactly. to you. Exactly. No. So, so I love QR codes. It just zapped, and now I got it right here. Yep. You know, and yep. I don't even need the menu. So I don't know. I thought I thought that was kind of yeah. interesting that only forty that forty five still aren't forty five percent. Anyway, going back to some of the other stuff there though. You know, the tech and using mobile devices, uh, I'm not too surprised in that, that 62% are not using mobile devices, but right. I think that is one of those areas that's going to dramatically change yep. in the next five years. Yep. I'll bet I, we do this survey again, those numbers bingo. will probably be fl- completely flopped. I agree. Flipped, rather. I <laughs> agreed. I agreed. I think that it's just it's just too easy yep. now to enable your staff with a mobile device and take that payment right there at the agreed. table. Uh, it's just it's just too convenient. Yeah. The digital signage one did not surprise me at all. It is a use case kind of based thing, and a lot of restaurants it, it's not appropriate. I mean, right, if you're going right. into a white table or even most fast casual, you you need a menu. You're sitting down. Right, you're good. Right. QSR. I don't know why. If you if you're in QSR, I don't know why you don't have digital menu <laughs> boards. I mean, that it's like perfectly for for those. Yeah, yeah. You can do day parts. You can do you know uh, promotions of stuff. So it's it's right there where people are making the yeah. decisions. So yeah, yeah some of the yeah. some of the specific specific responses of those did indicate things like, well, you know, like I'm not a fast food joint. I'm a sit right. down, nice restaurant. Why yeah, and they I don't need digital like menu boards. But, right. you know, the flip side of that, though, too, is I thought, hey, you know what, though? That like we're not talking about like the giant menu board you see behind the counter of McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever. Like it doesn't have to be that. That's a good it point. could also be just some some signage. One, it could be some signage maybe like in the now, window. This is true. This or is outside true. Outside, well, digital signage is effective. Absolutely. Exactly. That's yeah. like attracting some. I know yeah, that you yeah. know we asked this question from a menu, menu board, board kind of mm-hmm. perspective, and I think maybe this is one we could have tweaked that message and asked a little bit more about digital signage. Well, in general. I think we'll get into that when we have our programmatic digital out of home pod right. that we're yes. going to have. Coming up here, we'll get into some of those nuances because your point's valid. I, I, all restaurants could use digital yes, signage. Exactly. Uh, or imagine just, just being able to like walk in and like you know I mean I don't, you know you go to a sit down restaurant and you spend yeah. your first half an hour forty five minutes just sitting around in the lobby waiting. Right. Yeah. Imagine having some really nice you know signage around or whatever that show you yeah showing you the food you could, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. not just just watching a game you know like selling the story on a wine that you could get yeah. there. I mean yeah. this is what you needed for exactly. Right. We have a there's a local eatery we have around here for some reason I'm blanking on the name of it right now, um, but the, they're the kind of place where they have a bunch of TVs all 
all over the place. Mm -hmm. And they're showing like, you know, I don't know, just like funny, goofy, like, you know, videos. America's videos or something. They have sports stuff. But they also have it built where it's on a a loop where between the live programming that's running on it, Mm -hmm. there's routinely cutting in and showing like little ads of their 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 food, of their specials, Mm -hmm. of what's going on at Mm -hmm. this place if you come back on Monday or something like that. Right. That's the kind of stuff like it's a bit of a no-brainer. I don't care what kind of service you offer. That's right. You know, you can attract some attention by putting that stuff up there too. So, So yeah, I think my takeaway from these from those answers to those three questions was there's opportunity, but you also have to be able to demonstrate value and benefit. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to have to be able to go in there and explain mm-hmm. why they need this stuff mm-hmm. beyond what they their perceptions of what that stuff actually yeah. is yeah. for. Yeah. So yeah, good stuff. Exactly. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here in a moment with a little value of the bar, kind of distill this down to some yes. big takeaways. I think for our far far as you from this, but again. I highly encourage you to go check out these articles, dig a little bit deeper into it. If you have questions about some of the stuff we learned, don't mm-hmm. hesitate to reach out, um, and we'll, we'll be happy to answer some of those for you. But first of all, uh, before we get to that, let's talk, as always, about thanking our sponsors for the yes, show. Dean, what absolutely. sponsor would you like to highlight well, today? Well, let's, let's highlight a couple of Intel, Toshiba, yep, Lenovo, yep, yep. and Star Micronics. There How about go. those folks? Yes. Yep. So thank you. You and everyone else who sponsors our Tech Connect program, the podcast in particular, we appreciate your support. Couldn't do this without you. Mm -hmm. Uh, As always, if you like the show, like and subscribe. If you're listening on your podcaster of choice, make sure you're subscribed so you get new episodes when they drop. Make sure you do that thing also where it automatically downloads it to your your yes, device, so you don't have to yes. like go in and download it or no, you know, it just like happens. Maybe it's, it gets skipped because you're driving it's like or something. AI in the background. Yeah, there just you download. go. <laughs> so 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 do that. If there's an option to leave us a rating or review, please do that. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel. Lots of other cool videos we're doing there. And of course, if you have ideas for the show. This survey stuff. Think about this survey Absolutely. stuff you've heard about today. Yep. If there are other end users you'd like to be hearing from, if there Drop are customers yes. that you think, hey, I want to understand more about their business. I want we'll to know it. what's going on with their mm-hmm. technology, what mm-hmm. they're thinking and what they're feeling. Tell us what that is. We need to hear from you. We want to know what end users you want to hear from, what yep. surveys you'd like for us we'll to do We'll put the, the power future. of Blue Star behind it and get you the answers. Exactly. Yeah. We'll go have our telemarketing team make those thousands of calls so you don't have to do it yep. and relay those results back to you. So yep. there's always a link in the show notes to send us submissions for the show. Send something in. We'll send you a T-shirt. And hopefully you get you know another great survey and a podcast to there come you out go. of it, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, of course, as always, you can always keep in touch with us by finding us on Twitter at TechConnectPod or emailing us TechConnect at bluestarinc.com. All right, let's wrap things up here. First yep. of all, let's talk about our value of the bar. So, yes. you know, we shared a lot of takeaways and recommendations at the end of these posts. You know, if you're checking them out, go to the end and you can find some, you know, some ideas mm-hmm. and some mm-hmm. suggestions. But let's let's do a little deeper here. So, what do you what else would you add for our bars to take away from these surveys? What do you think they should well, get out of either one of these? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna call out the two uh, quotes that we have in here yes. uh, by some folks. So the first one is from Andre, uh, a great guy over at Heartland. Uh, he was speaking a little bit about you know around the question of what do you like least about your current mm-hmm. uh, point of sale, and he says it's not surprising that businesses want their POS to be easy and simple and not glitchy and unreliable. What is surprising is that businesses will trade simplicity for glitchy and unreliable. It feels to us that it has to be not only simple and reliable, but also powerful in order to meet the needs of today's restaurants and retailers. I thought that was a really, yes. that's a pretty good take. Yeah, uh, and then the last one, Jeremy Julian, uh, who's the CEO, and he's he's he been is, on the podcast. He's been yeah. on the podcast. He's got his own, the Restaurant Technology Guy uh, podcast. But anyway, his quote is, VARs need to find the pain. Yep. There are tons of restaurants out there with pain that VARs can solve if they spend the right time and energy looking into the problem looking for the problem statements and I, yeah, I think that's yeah. really good advice I mean we've talked about it right training is is one of them uh, that you have to having a transition plan these are the types of things you really just got to take your time a little bit right understand right. it and you'll make the wins four out of ten are looking for something yeah, so you'll yeah. get your wins well you know like we, we said that 25 percent of people that said you know oh, I don't have any particular issues there's nothing I yeah, like don't right. like about my yeah. point of sale yeah. that's where you can make <laughs> Really? Really? What about X? <laughs> you know, or like, especially if you know what they're using, you yeah. know, there's a certain yeah. problem that's, yeah. w- that's usually associated with that particular POS. Like, yeah. what about, you know. Did you know Windows 95 is no <laughs> longer? <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> do you not? Are you not interested in inventory control? Oh, you know, man. if you can, if if you know that stuff and have it in your back pocket, that's a quick way for you to <laughs> kind of, you know, like push them to to give a different response. Yes, that. that's good yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Um, I'll just add, you know, uh, looking at the AI survey in particular, I'll say uh-huh. this is one of those things where you just you got to just stay up to date on what's going on uh, because yes. again, a lot of these industries don't really see the point. They don't see the value. Mm-hmm, There's no mm-hmm. clear path to how AI fits in, or mm-hmm. they're doing something already and don't realize it. So. Mm-hmm. Just keep up to date. Know what's happening. Be that person that understands what's going on. Look for use cases. So, you know, if you've got those customers that are in prove it mode, yeah, find those right. use cases, even if they're not, you know, a big deal just yet or whatever, yep, yep. present them to them, talk exactly. to them about them. Yeah. Um, There's and then, comfort in just knowing other people are doing it. Yeah, so, yeah go ahead. exactly. Yeah. Um, and then on the point of sales side, you know, I, I, I agree with everything you just said. You know, it's again, it's a bit of an uphill battle still, mm-hmm. but there is opportunity. There is ways mm-hmm. to, to crack in here. Again, prove and demonstrate what you can do to make changes smooth and easy. I think if 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 that is your attitude going in of yep. like, hey, you know, I know a changing your point of sale is going to be difficult. I know it's not going to be fun. We've already taken worked all that out for you. Here's yep. everything we're we going plan. to do to get you back up and running immediately with no no issues whatsoever. Mm. Do that kind of stuff. Focus on some of that other tech that can improve their business. So if if, if they're very resistant to the point of sale change right now, fine. Pivot over and talk about digital menu boards. Mm-hmm. Talk about QR codes. Mm-hmm. Ask them about other ways that you can get some new tech into their business and and become someone they rely on there. So that maybe five years down the road, when that point of sale is, you know, when when Windows XP is, mm-hmm. you know, so absurdly out of touch <laughs> that you know, like just no computer will even run it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe that's the point where they reach out to you and you're like, all right, well, this guy's been over here helping us out with all yeah, this other stuff right. over the years. Yeah. We'll reach out and see what they have to say yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Interesting, interesting. Exactly. All right, well, let's shift into our, our – did you have any other thoughts on these surveys? N- well, I, would, I do want to riff one thing. I'm going to go back to the AI yeah. one uh, before I get into my tech connecting, or maybe this is one of two of my tech connecting. Okay, okay. Let's riff on this one a little bit because I, I thought I saw somewhere in the survey gaming, around gaming and AI. Well, so gaming – so th- there's the premise, right? The right. use of AI in gaming. So you can't walk into a casino. D- By the way, do you gamble at all? Very I don't. rarely. Are you I'm, a, I'm a slots of- guy. If I do, I just Marco, you get into any of this gambling stuff? All okay, right. Well, uh, to me, it's certainly like not it's sports getting- betting or anything. Well, yeah, that's I'm what I'm saying. That there's a lot of chatter around it because right. of all this now online sports betting, and they just made it legal in Ohio. So it's like if you live in Ohio, you are getting inundated, right? Right. At least with with that kind of stuff. So. You can't you can't walk into a casino and use your phone to do like card counting, right? Right. And right. come up with the probability that you're going to win <laughs> or lose. You couldn't walk in there with Google Glass <laughs> and you know giving you heads up displays <laughs> on what the probability of you winning. But sounds like if, something out of an oceans film, you know. <laughs> so my question is, do you think AI is going to kill online gaming? And here's here's where I'm going. Mm. Like somebody at some point in time is going to come up with a program where because yeah. a lot of this online yeah. betting is like real time, like is is Joe Burrow gonna gonna make this completion? Right. You know what's the percentage? We always see those ads for like Amazon Web Services and like you know, right. like Amazon Web Services helped us determine the completion probability yeah. for this this right. pass. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so if you go to a casino, the house wins on blackjack. Right. A, a right. certain percentage. Right. Of, I don't know what it is. It's like fifty five percent or something like that. Right. The house wins, and that's why casinos make money because right. most of the time they're winning. But if you have an application that's giving you a little bit of a head start on that's that, a great maybe point. AI kills gaming. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's I'm, a great point. Maybe we should start that company, by yeah. the way. <laughs> like, you know, subscribe <laughs> to us and we'll give you accurate I, bets. I wouldn't be surprised there's already multiple startups out there that are kind of, you know, uh, heading that direction. No but, doubt. Yeah, that's interesting. No yeah. Doubt. Because, I mean, there's already, like, I'm a baseball guy. Right. And I will play, like, daily fantasy baseball yes. every once in a great while. Like, in one of those things, I'll throw a buck at something every, you know, mm-hmm. once every mm-hmm. Friday or something, maybe. Right. Yeah. But that's the kind of stuff where if you're involved in it, like, there is so much analytics already oh, in that. Man. I mean, it isn't any sport, but, yeah. like, baseball's one. Money ball. Just, you yeah. can, yeah, you dig into all the the background statistics, and it's mm-hmm. stuff that I will use sometimes to help me, like a draft a fantasy baseball team, mm-hmm. for instance. You know, mm-hmm. understanding like you know not just how many strikes did this this pitcher throw or mm-hmm. how many strikeouts did he have, but like what was his strikeout to ball ratio, yeah, what was right, right. ground ball to fly ratio, stuff yep. like that. That yep. you get you dig into it, and and to your point, yeah, you can start mapping out a. You can take a player that you know look that looks like they were terrible last year, mm-hmm. and say, okay, well, if you dig under the surface and look at the behind the scenes numbers, everything was great. He just got unlucky last year for some reason. Yeah, right. That's someone to invest in this year. Yeah. I mean, there's already a lot of that kind of stuff. But yeah, to your right. point, if but you if make you it that real time accessible, AI real time, now, and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. I don't know. I can see it influencing. Yeah, that'd be anyway, that's not my tech connecting. Yeah, Here's, let's hear what you got here. I, I thought you would like this one, so I stumbled across Dictionary.com. 
adds 33 new words. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, 313. Oh, I said okay. 33. 313. I'm only going to give you about 10 of them. But some of these are like, what? Have you ever heard of rage farming? <laughs> no. The tactic of intentionally provoking political opponents, typically by posting inflammatory content on social media, is rage farming. I get farming. the I, don't, I thought we just call that trolling. <laughs> Okay, there's a new word for it, <laughs> phrase for it. It's raised for me. Okay, Here's the next okay. one. Trauma dumping. You ever trauma heard of dumping. trauma dumping? I'm kind of familiar with this concept. Unsolicited, Maybe I heard it. unsolicited one-sided sharing of traumatic or intensely negative experience yeah, or emotions yeah. in, an in an inappropriate setting. Yeah, like, that makes sense. Like you're around having a great time and somebody, the negative Nancy, comes in and does some trauma dumping on you, right? I, I literally, I, we're not going to talk about it here, but I can literally think of a, an exact example of a time it happened. I was at someone's like going away party. From, well, now you know what to call yeah, it. Yeah, and I, yeah. yeah trauma yeah. dumping. I, I got, Bringing down the room is what I, I call it. I got quite a yeah. few more of them okay. here. I, so, Hellscape. I feel like okay, that one's that been one. around yeah. for a while, yeah, right? All right, we all know what else yeah. Anti anti fragile. Okay. Uh, so becoming more robust when exposed to stressors, uncertainty, or risk. Here's an example. We have made the structure structure sturdy and anti fragile, so bad weather makes it stronger. Okay, that's that seems like a good thing. So now you know anti fragile. I feel like there's a better word you could have used, but okay, sure. Okay, you know what a typho is, or maybe it's mm. tifo, T I F O. T I F O no typo. So if you're at a soccer game, you ever been to a soccer game and and the, all the fans just take these large banners and right, they roll them right, up, right? And it's like it blacks out like yeah, a whole whatever. logo. A whole, yeah, 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 exactly. And now like a whole section can't see. Right. That's called a typo, by the okay. way. Now there's okay. a word for it. Is that an is that a like a, an acronym for something or I don't know. Well, I it says here. I'll just read a coordinated display of including large banners, flags, and sometimes signs or cards executed cooperatively uh, or performed huh. in unison by most. Most fervent supporters of okay. you know a okay. whatever a game. So I know it did come from so the somewhere. new terrible towel. I guess no. If yeah. you look at the etymology of it, it does come from like a Greek. No, it comes uh. from an Italian word that means raging support or something like that. So no, seriously, it's, okay, it's like okay. you know that's the etymology All right. of it. That makes sense. A, a couple more for you. you ever heard of cakeage? <laughs> no. <laughs> is this like the? Is you ever it heard of videos? corkage? Corkage. No. You know what corkage is like? If you walk into a restaurant with a bottle of wine. And oh. they're going to charge you a fee right, for right, uncorking right. that. Right, right. Cakeage. If you walk into a restaurant okay. with a cake, that's a thing because I've encountered that like a birthday party stuff. Like if you like, I think you know we took uh, we took our son to okay like, miles to jump right. zone, yeah, 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 yeah or yeah, something yeah. like that, and they charged you. a And fee? I think I think it was one of those things where if you bring your own cake, Got they'll it. charge you. Got it. You know, or you can or well, you can buy. I didn't know which way to go with this. I mean, how rude is it to walk into a restaurant with your own flipping dessert? I mean, I would never <laughs> think to do that. And okay, so but the restaurant's going to charge your butt for that. <sighs> uh, so I get it. I'm That's, you know, whatever. I didn't think of the kid. Maybe angle. the desserts suck. I didn't, you know? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of the kid. All right. So a couple more of a sign of our times. Pet fluencer. <laughs> okay. A person who gains a large following on social media yeah, by posting, yeah. you know. That would make sense. Grumpy cat kind of thing. There yeah, you go. Yeah. You know. Bedwetting. Uh, uh, so bedwetting okay. is exhibiting of emotional overreaction as an, as an anxiety or alarm to events. Like... <laughs> You know, here's an example. No doubt the executive order will be received by environmentalists with the usual bedwetting. <laughs> wow. I thought that was pretty good. That's a bit of a last, diss, but okay. Yeah. Last two, Grundle. I'm not going to actually Grundle? go look it up. I'm not okay. going to tell you okay. what it is because it was wildly inappropriate. Okay. All um, right. And then finally, Digital Nomad has made the dictionary. Oh, okay. Right? Well, that we know sense. that one. A person yeah. who walks or works remotely. Okay. So there you go. Okay. So uh, I just thought I'd throw some new. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get in some rage farming. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> so what's rage tech, farming. Yeah. What's, what's tech connecting with you, John? <laughs> I'm off to do a little rage, rage farming. farming. <laughs> <laughs> crops are going to come up good this year. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, so, Dean, um, do you think we need another traffic light color? <laughs> oh, no. Not I mean, a, no. we got red, we got yellow, red, yellow green. green. What about white? White. So what does white mean then? All right. So Why? Why are we here, doing this? Here's some context. This actually is not a terrible thing. Now, all granted, right. I, I don't know. If, Prove it. If this would happen, <laughs> and it would cost a lot to make it happen. But there's been some discussion, apparently, about an idea of adding a new fourth white light. Now, okay. the point of this is for automated vehicles, for autonomous oh. vehicles. All right, so the, the idea behind this is that as more autonomous vehicles take the road mm -hmm. and as there are more and more of them out there, having a an additional white light is for the still the regular human drivers mm -hmm. to help them know when 
automated flow is essentially happening like at an intersection. So oh, let me clarify this. A so let's say like the idea being that in the future, especially in, in busy areas where there might be a lot of automated vehicles, I think they're like they're um, the like the level point was like something like 30 percent or more. And ideally, especially when you get up into 70 percent, but 30 percent or more of the vehicles approaching an intersection at a given time mm -hmm. are autonomous. Mm -hmm. The idea being that those vehicles basically get to essentially take over the traffic pattern mm. and decide so who, we're, like, we're, decide we're tech where they're shaming going. people that don't have automated well, cars. It's basically you have to wait until the well, automated. It's not car. actually. It's not that. It's not oh. even the wait. Oh, it's okay. instead basically saying follow the other cars. Like you, it, I, it, just because you're coming up on this intersection, yeah, and maybe yeah, yeah, you're yeah, thinking yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to stop, okay. or I need to wait, or I shouldn't be taking a left turn here. White means Instead, automation is now White in place. is telling you, hey, there's automation going on right now that is dictating the traffic flow. Go with the flow. If the cars in front of you, the automated vehicles in front of you, are going on through it's an automated car, or are turning, I don't know. I can That's, see the humans just... I know that that's, for, for that's, lack of a better yes, term. They're, oh, I'm just going to take the right turn anyway. <laughs> right, exactly. So the idea is being like follow the flow and stick I with gotcha. it because right now gotcha. the automation process. Now they mm. basically said that like essentially they're saying you need to have at least that 30 percent threshold because okay. it's enough vehicles that right. people will kind of yeah. just kind of fall in line and, yeah. and, and yeah. cooperate. Yeah. But they also did point out like ideally what happens is if you get to the 70 percent threshold of AVs in a, in an area, the traffic flow becomes so much smoother and easier and mm. actually frees up. A lot of time, a lot less accidents, ah. and again, just the idea of like this. I, like, I can see this. Happening. I like this concept. I, can see it I know happening. it's like I said, it's good. It would take a lot of infrastructure and money to an mm -hmm, investment to mm -hmm. make this happen. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. idea behind it makes me a little more comfortable about the the whole. You know, I'm, I'm all about the the automated vehicles. Yeah, right, right, right. But right. my biggest beef has always been I want as many of them out there as possible mm -hmm. because I don't want to be the person like letting my car do the thing and some Joe Schmo idiot going ah <laughs> running into me. You know, like it's the other people. <laughs> that I, that concerns me. It's the others. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, so so oh. this is one of those ones that kind of maybe alleviates that a little bit, mm -hmm. the idea of like, mm -hmm. all right, if we're putting up something that tells regular drivers that are, you know, manually controlling their vehicles to just follow the flow and go with whatever the car in front of them is yep. doing when that white light is on. I think on. this takes off in Europe. I don't know about, I don't uh, know about Texas. You're probably right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, because I can see someone in Texas being like, nah, "Gosh, dirt and ice." Nothing wrong with Texas. I love some white light. Tell me what yeah. to do. Yeah, but if you're an individual, right? And in, in, well, right. anyway, we're being very stereotypical right now. But anyway, <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I, either way, I thought it was interesting. You know, and they again, they acknowledge like, "Look, this is not going to happen anytime soon." Yeah. But yeah. you know, it the idea is is relatively sound. All right, you planted the seed. Sense. You've planted yeah. the seed exactly. Yeah. So. All right, that is what is tech connecting with us right now. So uh, until next time, go out and read Blue Star Nation. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Go check it out. Com. Check it out. Subscribe so you make sure that you get notifications about new articles and tell us what you want to hear about when you hear. And as always, folks, please stay connected. Tech Connect Podcast is brought to you by ELO. All right, you we talked a little bit about digital signage, digital menu boards, yes. all that cool stuff in, yes. in restaurants, Absolutely. you know, that can uh, can help you know yep. drive attention and yep. let people know what's happening. For sure. Well, if you're looking for the kind of displays that stand out and will help entice and engage customers, mm. draw them into the restaurant, yes. help them see what the specials are, yep. convince them they simply have to upsize to yes, the exactly the you know the giant size French fries and, and or the and, big margarita, the big margarita. I mean, go. come on, you don't have to. My wife doesn't need any. Center for that, and just just tell her there's a big margarita. And <laughs> She's there. Bam! Right yeah. on the table. Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, look no further than Elo's large format interactive digital signage. Just good thing my wife doesn't listen to the podcast. Right. <laughs> With size options from 32 to 65 inches, Elo offers touchscreens that add brilliant interactive canvases to any environment. With sleek, slim designs built to withstand the rigors of continuous commercial use. All right. Now we know Elo prides itself on modularity, choice, filling all the needs, any needs that are out there. Yep. So here are just a few of the options that they offer with these displays. All right. PCAP or infrared touch technology. Yep. Anti-friction glass. Nice. Touch through capability. 4K options, computer mm. modules, and edge connect peripherals. We love Boom. edge connect stuff. Yeah, just there you go. Attach a bunch of things. Yeah. <laughs> connect it, them. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we're good. On an edge. Yeah, on an edge, yeah. yes. All the buzzwords. Yeah. <laughs> Elo's going to pull their sponsorship. Like, these guys aren't doing us any favors. Come on. Uh, Elo backs us up with a minimum of three year warranties and optional on site exchange if service is needed. Check out the link in the show notes to browse the options, specs, and to buy now.
The Technic Podcast is also brought to you by Zebra. Well, to succeed in today's digitally connected business world, uh, your customers need to give their workers the right tools to complete their unique works faster. Yes. Smarter. Yes. Better. Yes. All these things. <laughs> all those good things. Man, yes. I'm assuming most businesses think those three things are really good. For yeah, they're really their important. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've totally. never heard of a business that, hey, you know, I'd really like for my people to be slower, Slow. dumber, and just, you know, <laughs> less efficient. Whatever, you yeah, know, like right, just yeah. indifferent. <laughs> so, Zebra's portfolio of mobile computing hardware and software uh. tools can help them raise their performance. Now, Zebra offers a range of mobile computer design forms to equip workers for all use cases, from handhelds and tablets, like we talked about today in yes, restaurants, absolutely. to wearables and vehicle mounted computers, maybe stuff that AI can help supplement mm-hmm. and add to. Mm-hmm. Whether on the Windows or Android operating system, Zebra mobile computers feature robust built in software intelligence that enables workers to perform at their best shift after shift. Check out the link in the show notes to review Zebra's portfolio of mobile computers and reach out to your Blue Star account manager or BDM to get help picking the right option for your customer. 